Cool, so this is the 17th problem in the grind 75. This is climbing stairs. We we're given 20 minutes, so let's start the timer now. Okay, you are climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach the top. Each time, you can either climb one or two steps. How many distinct ways can you climb to the top? So, two, two, the two ways to climb to the top. Three ways to climb to the top. So this seems like I feel like I've seen something similar to this before. Um, I'm going to go to the the drawing board really quick. Let's just come up with an example. So the example that they had for us. They had um, if n is equal to 2 or if n was equal to 3. We're going to start off with say n is equal to 3. So you have step 1, 2, and 3. Um, let me see. So they said you can go you can go 1, 1, and 1, or you can go, um, let's see. You can go, say ground is here. This is ground right here. You go one or one and two, which will get you, you know, I think, uh, let me actually show the leap. So we can go one, one, one. We can go one, two, or we can go two, one. So that's just to illustrate the example, um, example number two. Let's see, so there's a minimum of one step. This seems like a recursive type of problem to me. Um, let's see. So we know that we're going to want to do, check the number of ways. So let's say we're here. We are on, did I switch over to the drawing board actually? Yeah, I did, okay. So let's say we're, we have n is equal to three, say n is equal to three, just like this example right here. And we've already taken one step. At this point, we want to find out how many different um, jumps we can make given n is equal to two. And if we look at our example, um, we can actually, let's just draw one. So let's say n is equal to 2 is over here. So here's ground, and here's 1 and 2. So n is equal to 2. We can take one step, or we can take two steps. So if we decide to go down the route where we take one step right here, then now what's left over is n is equal to 1. And so we'll pass in n is equal to 1. And if n is equal to 1, then we know that there's only one way to reach the top step. And so we will just return 1. So that can actually be our base case. So I'm going to switch over to the coding, the lead code window. Base case, if n is equal to 1. Like say return one. Let's see. Now, how do we make sure we don't overshoot? So, if we're making two recursive calls, and let's go. Let's actually go back to the paint really quick. Um, let's see. <clears throat> if we're on this step right here and we try to make um, say that that n minus 2 jump then we're going to end up at some step up here which doesn't exist so we would technically want to add 0 um, we can only take steps 1 or 2 but that would be fine because that wouldn't add to our 
total. However, the n minus 1 recursive call would, because we would be able to get up here. And once we get to the point where there is, once we're right here, yeah, if we take one step, then that's that one path. And so we can add it to our total number of ways to reach the top. But if we try to take two steps, we could just say that we would it would be zero because we would currently be at the n minus one case and we would be subtracting two and that would go um, that would go below let's see one yes so if we were at the n the two case we would just backtrack a little bit. So we're at n2, which is right here. We can do 1, 2. We can do 1. And once we're at 2, that would mean n would be equal to 0 because we'd already be at the top spot. So we can say if n is less than or equal to 0, we should just be able to return 0 because we're already there. Okay, so I believe that is what our base case is going to be. So let's switch over to the window. And that is not if n is equal to 1. If n is less than or equal to 0, <clears throat> then we're going to return 0. Otherwise, we're going to return the sum of, let's see. How are we going to add? If we overshoot, will that be okay actually? Because if we overshoot, and we, we still try to count that. This will account for it if we return what n is. If we overshoot to like that point right there, that's not a real step, so we should be taking away. So I believe that might actually work. So we can just return n. Otherwise, we're going to return climb stairs, let's say n minus 1 plus climb stairs n minus 2. So let's look at the original example we drew out. I'm going to switch over to paint really quick and see if our uh, algorithm holds up. So just going to erase this really quick. Let's get, let's get a bigger racer. Okay, so if we have, I'm also gonna erase this really quick. <clears throat> so let's say at our first level, we have n is equal to three. Okay, that means we're right here. Because we are not less than or equal to 1, and it's not less than or equal to 1, then we're going to make two recursive calls. One, <clears throat> which is uh, n minus 2, and another, which is n minus 1. So the n minus 2 recursive call is going to be here, n minus 2. And at this point, we have n is equal to 1. And so let's actually keep going down this recursive call. At this point, we know that there's only one way to get to the top, and so we are going to return that value of 1. So then value of 1 is going to get passed back up to the top. And actually, technically what we are doing is we are summing these recursive calls right here. And sorry, let me just make sure. Yeah. So we are going to be adding one. That's the result of that. 
Um, let me let me just do this. One plus. Okay, what do we have if we are at two? Well, if we are at two, that means that. Let me go over there. We've taken one step, and so we are at n is equal to two. That means we have two ways to get to the top now, because we can go one, two, or we can go one. So again, if we subtract two from that, then we're going to get zero. If we subtract one from that, we're going to get one. So we know that this is one way to get to the top. So that's going to be a plus one. And that would technically also be a way to get to the top. So would, we wouldn't really return zero. We would actually return another plus one. So we'd have a total of three ways to get to the top. So I believe if it's just less than or equal to one. But yeah. I'm just trying to think of a case. Would we ever go, as soon as we get to two, yeah, we can never go below zero or one because two is the last value before we hit our base case of less than or equal to one. And we can only take steps of size one or of size two. So we can't go farther than that. We'll, not, we'll never go to a negative value. So we can just add plus one because we can take uh, two, two steps to get up to the top. And we would also add plus one because once we get here, n is equal to one. And we know that there's one step to go from there. So that would total, that would be the three steps in total. Okay, and so I think we just have to modify our base case and we should be good to go from there. So let me switch over. We should just return one. Otherwise, we can just return the sum of that recursive call. And I'm going to run to make sure we have no syntactical issues, which we shouldn't. All right, and then I'm going to hit submit. And Wi-Fi is a bit slow today, it looks like. But time limit exceeded. I've never seen that before. I think it. Oh, wait, did we have a. We shouldn't have had a stack overflow error. I mean, we'll, we will always be decrementing what n is. Oh, hmm. Let's see, does it say 1 through 45? Hold on, let me just try running one more time and see what happens. It's gonna do the same thing, yeah. Okay, so the, the reason is because when we do this for a large input, it's going to, every time that we see a value, um, like say the input was 44, right? So if we were to look at 43 and then 42, we would have to calculate all the values underneath that, like the number of steps that those could take and continue on. But if you think about what happens, those values will branch out until they hit the base case. And that base case will be hit numerous times and values above that will also be hit several times, but this is extremely time consuming. And if we can find a way so that every time we've seen a value, we can just add it to some collection that, um, like every time we get the value of like how many steps we're supposed to take to get to that value, and then we add it to some external storage somewhere and then check that first to see if we've gotten the value that would save us a lot of time because then we wouldn't have to keep recursing 
So let's see. Let's just add side of. I'm gonna try. I haven't actually. Let's see. Let's see if this works. So public and maybe it's going to be called. Let's call it cash. Um, that's just going to be. So we don't actually, we'll just make the hash map. So first I'll, I'll say it's a public hash map. It's just going to be of, does it even need to be? Yeah, because we need to know what value to return. So it's going to be integer and integer. Public hash map. This is going to be called cache. And the key value is going to be um, so some end value. And then it's corresponding number of steps. OK, so let's just instantiate it really quick. Cache is equal to a new hash map integer integer and let's do that so we want to say how do we prevent do we even need that actually Equal to one, return one. We only know how many steps it's going to take to get to a certain end value once we have already gone to the very bottom and gotten to the place where there's just one step to take. So, how do we, at what point do we start keeping track? of those values. I'm just yeah, at what point in the recursive call. And we're gonna go back up. So let me think about the stack, recursive stack really quick. I'm gonna go back. So once we're at this bottom one here, we know that there's, this is going to contribute a value of one. This is also gonna contribute a value of one and they're gonna both go back up to here. So, what we're going to want to do actually is make We're going, to, we're going to add this n value, and then we're going to add the recursive calls, the sum actually, sum of recursive calls. So let's see if we can do this. Switch back over to the leak code window. So we're going, we are going to say, Maybe if if cache dot contains um, let's say n, then we're going to simply return cache dot get n. And the, if not, then we're going to want to add its recursive call to the cache. So we can say cache dot put, I believe. Yeah, put 
and we're going to take this right here and we're going to say the current end value is now going to be tied to the recurrent. Sorry, I, that alarm was pretty loud. Um, yeah. Okay, so but would we miss would we be missing a recurrent statement? Cash dot put have that value there. I mean we could I ha I would have to think about this really quick, but okay. And recursive all is going to be equal to this right here. We're going to pass in recursive call. And we're also going to return recursive call. Not sure if this, because I know we have to have some sort of return statement here. Let's see. So let's say we have. I'm sort of going over time, but let's say we have four. So let me draw out the tree really quick for what four would look like. Um, I'm going to make some space right here. So for four, we would have four. Um, let's say minus two would be good this way. Minus one would be this way. Minus two, minus one, minus two, minus one. Uh, that was incorrect here. Minus two, minus one. Okay, so we have a total of one, two, and these this will actually go down to zero and uh, one. So you have one, two, three, four, five ways of getting to four. And let's say, so if we get down to zero, then we're gonna return one. If we get down there, then we're also gonna return one. So that means that it's gonna push us up. We're going to have this recursive call right here that's going to be stored. And we're going to put that corresponding, the sum into our hash map. And then we're going to go back up And if we see it at any point again, then we can simply add it. So the way the recursive call will work is this one will always be called first. And so we're going to, I believe it would be a some like a pre-order traversal. Or wait, wait. The order. Yeah, pre-order, or I believe. And so all these values on this left tree right here will get loaded into the cache first. And so once we go down this side, it should be a lot quicker. So I believe that's right, but if it's not, then I'm just going to have to, or what is this? Cache. Why is that wrong? Public hash map integer, it's called cache. Well, we're also missing that there. But why is this wrong? Let's just try doing it on one line. Equal to, let's say that, let's run that. Cash dot contains and ah, so it contains key. I forget that occasionally. Um, okay, run that. Okay, let's submit. Okay, no way. All right, cool. So 
yeah, we figured out how to increase the uh, space complexity of this algorithm. Um, I guess that was a little more straightforward than I initially thought it would be, and it ended up taking us a bit more time than intended, but at least we know exactly how it works now.